Hello guys, this is Dr. Ritesh and I am back with another video and this video is about all about Hepatitis B virus pathogenesis, Hepatitis B virus serology and how does it affect our body and how our body responds to this and how the different serum markers increase, decrease and what will be the effect of vaccination. So in this video you are going to learn all these things in a very very easy way and this will long last in your memory because I am going to explain it in an extremely easy way. So to understand the first thing is that we have to look at the Hepatitis B virus. So this is the Hepatitis B virus. Now this is the structure of the Hepatitis B virus. You can see this is the Hepatitis B surface antigen. These are the antigen that are present on the surface of the Hepatitis B. And this is the antigen that basically help the Hepatitis B virus to attach with the hepatocytes that are the kind of cell in the liver. These are the Hepatitis B E antigen. This is basically the core core capsules and it is called hepatitis b core antigen and inside the core you can see there is the dna hepatitis b virus is a dna virus remember and it infects the body when it enters into the blood so if the hepatitis b virus entered through git tract through our mouth it's not going to affect you just because it is a viral bile acid labile and the acid will destroy the virus so that's why it affects you only when it enters directly into your blood to this and this virus this is the virus this uh, and i have actually made it reach smaller but in here it's actually virus and here it's the actual size of the virus so this virus entered into your blood that's suppose this is our day one day one it entered into your blood when it entered into your blood as the blood circulate this blood come into the liver so let's suppose this is the liver and these are the hepatocytes inside the liver so these are the kind of cell present in the liver with the liver this hepatitis b virus attached with the hepatocyte with the help of hepatitis b surface antigen this is basically the surface antigen, antigen that are helping the hepatitis b virus to attach with the um, hepatocytes once the hepatitis b virus attached with the hepatocytes it release its dna into the hepatocytes remember this DNA then now I have taken this hepatocyte. Uh, I have taken it into a larger size just to explain everything in a pretty good way. When once they release the hepatitis B DNA, this DNA come into the nucleus of hepatocytes. Now everything has left behind. Just the virus has released its DNA into the hepatocyte. This DNA then come into the hepatocyte nucleus. So you can see this is a partially double stranded. It then converted into a double stranded DNA, and this double stranded DNA is then incorporated into the genome of the hepatocytes. Once it incorporated into the genome of the hepatocytes, this genome then start working and making the protein and the DNA for the virus because this viral DNA is being translated inside the hepatocyte nucleus so you can see the viral replication in the hepatocyte nucleus started and here actually the messenger RNA is from from, uh, from the transcription of the viral genomes and fr then this messenger RNA come into the cytoplasm and it is translated and some protein are made like hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B E antigen, some of the DNA through reverse transcriptase mechanism is formed. Both of these recombine again and another a new viral particle is formed. This viral particle is then released. So if this process keep going on, it's not going to affect our body. We are not going to have the hepatitis infection. So what is actually the problem? Where is the problem? So in the hepatitis B, the main thing is basically the immunologic response. This is the main concept. The immunological response that's going to increase the difference logic much like if, as I described, it is basically the immunological response that causes an increase in the serology marker of the different um, substance like hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B E antigen, hepatitis B uh, core antigen. So basically, when this process is going on inside the hepatocytes, our T cells detect it. Oh, there is something wrong inside the um, hepatocyte. So it comes, it destroys this hepatocyte because it doesn't want this hepatocytes and it doesn't want this viral to be replicated. So when it destroyed all this substance, hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B E antigens, all the oh, hepatitis B viral DNA, all of these substance are basically released into the blood. And this is the main mechanism that these serologic markers start detecting in our blood. So I hope you understand the concept, you understand the pathology. Now let's discuss the serology. I described previously that when the T cell attack on the type of hepatocytes in which viral is being replicated, this result into a rupture of the hepatocyte. When the hepatocyte ruptured, the release of the viral particle happened. And along with the release of different viral particles, your ALT, your AST that is also present inside the cells also released just because due to a damage to the hepatocytes. So the first particle that start detecting into your blood is hepatitis B surface antigen. There is no antibodies because antibodies develop only after the after the rising level of the hepatitis B surface antigen. Because when these antigens in our blood, hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B E antigen, hepatitis B core antigen, when they rise in our blood, our body detected oh we have this foreign particle and then they start making the antibodies against these substances. So the first substance inside our body, the first thing that that basically rise in our blood is the hepatitis B surface antigen. Okay, and when it rises at that time, there is no hepatitis B surface antigen antibody. Hepatitis B surface antigen amongst the other viral serology, this is the most important ones. And when hepatitis B surface antigen in your blood is present, so it means that you have the infection. Okay. So now you have to differentiate whether it's an acute infection, whether it's a chronic infection. So for that, you have to check your uh, hepatitis B surface antigen. If it is present from less than six months, it means that you are going to have the acute infection. If it is present for more than six months, then it means you are going to have chronic infection. So this is the first step. The presence of hepatitis B surface antigens means the presence of infection. Then what is it is acute or it is chronic, you can detect it from the uh, time duration like if it is for more than uh, six months then it is chronic if it is for less than six months then it is acute okay, so now let's discuss another core concept in this video so if you are having hepatitis b surface antigen in your body and they are present from less than six months it means you are having acute infection so in acute infections you will have hepatitis b surface antigen but along with hepatitis b surface antigen you will have certain other antigen and antibodies so the first thing you will have in your blood will be hepatitis b surface antigen you can easily remember it from the mnemonic sema then you will have hepatitis b e antigens this antigen is also very important and it basically represents that your hepatitis b virus is being replicated inside your hepatocytes then you have 
IgM and this is basically the antibodies. These antibodies form against the hepatitis B capsids core antibody uh, antigen that's what we call core antigen. So these are the anti antibodies against the hepatitis B core antigen and this A represent acute. So in the acute condition you have hepatitis B surface antigen, you have hepatitis B E antigen and you have IgM antibody. Now, if you have hepatitis B surface antigen into your blood for more than six months, so it means you are having the chronic infections. Now, if you are having the chronic infections, it can be low infectivity or it can be high infectivity. Low infectivity means that the patient is asymptomatic. High infectivity means that the patient is symptomatic. So, how you will differentiate between both of these two and how you will differentiate it from the acute infection? So, here is another mnemonic. Here it was SEMA, here it is SIGA. So, if the patient is having chronic infections, you will have straightforward information that hepatitis B surface antigen is from the more than six months. So, this will be the main differentiating point between the acute and chronic. So, in the chronic and having high infectivity means that the patient is having chronic hepatitis B plus he is having symptomatic as well. So, the patient will have the SIGA kind of serology. So, what is the SIGA? SIGA means hepatitis B surface antigen positive, hepatitis B E antigen positive. Now, in this G, this G is basically the IG, IgG. Previously, in the SEMA, it was IgM. Here, it is IgG because when you are having the chronic infections, your antibodies switch to the IgG. So, now, when you are having the chronic hepatitis B virus with a high infectivity, you will have the IgG antibodies. And again, these antibodies will be against hepatitis B surface, uh, hepatitis B core antigen antibodies, remember. So, in the chronic high stage infectivity, you will have hepatitis B surface antigen, hepatitis B E antigen and IgG antigen. So if you are having the chronic but low infectivity R means you are asymptomatic then you will have hepatitis B surface antigen but now your hepatitis B E antigen will be absent because this E antigen represents the infectivity, infectivity rate. So if you have low infectivity it means you, are, you have the chronic conditions, you have the hepatitis B virus but that is not being replicated. So you will have the absence of hepatitis B E antigen but again you will have the IgG antibodies against the core uh, hepatitis B virus core capsid. So you will have hepatitis B surface antigen, you will have IgG antibodies but you will have the absence of the hepatitis B E antigen and this basically represents the chronic hepatitis B virus infection with a low infectivity remember and in the low infectivity means that a patient will be asymptomatic high infectivity means that a patient will be symptomatic now let's talk about another high yield concept and the pathogenesis of the hepatitis B so that is the window phase so in the window phase remember you have only two kind of the antibodies in your blood that is detected that is hepatitis B E antigens uh, antibodies against the hepatitis B E antigen and antibodies against the hepatitis B C antigens that is IgM so only these two antibodies are detected inside your blood not a hepatitis B surface antigen is detectable nor hepatitis B E antigen is detectable nor the antibodies against the hepatitis B surface antigen is detectable and how this happens so let's suppose you have 10 hepatitis B surface antigen into your blood your body start making the anti hepatitis B surface antigen antibodies so 10 antigens 10 antibodies are made so both of these antigen antibody complex they make a reaction with each other they made an antibody complex so that's why your hepatitis b surface antigen become undetectable at the same time your hep anti hepatitis b surface antigen uh, antibodies also become undetectable so that's why both of these are not detected in the window period uh, same you have hepatitis b e antigen so your our body make anti hepatitis b e antibody against the hepatitis b e antigen but this antibody is, ma is made in a higher amount so that's why it basically decreases. it basically makes you the level of the hepatitis B antigen in the body undetectable but there is high anti HBE so that's why it is detected inside the blood and this is the IgM antibodies again it is also detected in the blood so I hope you understand the concept like when you are having the window period <coughs> Anti hepatitis B surface antigen and anti HB is not detected. This is just because they make the immune complex and both of them are not detected. Let's talk about the recovery phase. As I told earlier in the video that if you are having hepatitis B surface antigen, this is the earliest antigen. This is present both in acute and in chronic. When it is present, it means infection is present. That can be either acute or chronic. So if you are having the recovery phase, so what does the recovery phase mean? That will be directly mean that the absence of the hepatitis B surface antigen. So in the recovery phase, what actually happened? Basically, the antibodies against the hepatitis B surface antigen is formed. That is anti HBS. So when these antibodies form against the hepatitis B, it basically lower the level. It makes the level of the hepatitis B virus antigen undetectable and there is increased level of hepatitis B surface antigen. So in the recovery phase, you have the antibodies against the hepatitis B surface antigen. Same, the antibodies against the hepatitis B E antigens increase and this basically decrease the level of the hepatitis B E antigen in the blood undetectable. And again, you have the IgG antibodies. In the first three months, you have the IgM antibodies and after the first three months, you have the IgG antibody against the um, core capsule. So, in the recovery phase or after the recovery phase, we have just these three kind of the antibodies into our, in our blood detected and they are detected for the lifelong. So, any times if you do the patient serology for the hepatitis B virus and they are having this kind of three antibodies, so it means that you, the patient is, uh, is, is in the recovery phase. So, let's talk about what will be the antibody status or what will be the serology in case if the patient is vaccinated for the hepatitis B virus. So basically in the hepatitis B virus vaccine we use the hepatitis B surface antigen. It's a kind of recombinant uh, vaccines in which we take the hepatitis B surface antigen and this surface antigen is injected inside in the body of a human. So the patients having the vaccination for hepatitis B virus will only have the antibodies against the hepatitis B surface antigen. Okay, so this is extremely easy. Now let's discuss another core concept and there are a lot of MCQs on these things in the U world. So let's suppose an infant that is burns to a mother and she's hepatitis B positive. So what will be the uh, uh, viral profile in the baby? Let's suppose if she, uh, the babies are and the infant is having the vertical transmission. So what will be the viral profile? So the first thing you need to understand as I described earlier in the video that in the hepatitis B 
the hepatitis hepatocyte injury is basically due to the cellular cytotoxic immune response it is not by the virus itself like the virus is just keep replicating itself inside the hepatocytes they do not damage the hepatocyte but it is basically the response the response from the t cells they detect this virus inside the hepatocyte they attack the cell they rupture the cell and they cause the release of the different viral markers and different um, uh, hepatitis enzymes so that's that are detected inside the blood so when an infant is born basically the infant's immune response is not that much strong so he do not have mature t cells t cells as a result there is not a lot of ruptures um, of hepatocytes in the infant so initially the infant will have the normal lft or he will have extremely mildly elevated lft so this is a extremely highly uh, core concept so if a baby is born to a hepatitis b positive mother and he's having normal lft doesn't mean that he don't have the hepatitis b he might have the hepatitis b but he have the low lft just because of the decreased immune response